a moment just to get myself together here and I pray everybody's morning is has been good so far uh, thanking God because he is still in control of everything there's nothing that he is not able to handle so we are here for those that that may be watching me for the first time and don't know me I'm Dr. Jewel Williams I'm one of the lead pastors of Abundant Life Worship Center Thank you. Thank you. And um, so we are we have been doing this month of praying. And um, it, as we get further on, you could put a prayer request in and I will pray for you. And so I'm just going to start this morning. First, I want to say thank you to all of you who have been writing on our walls, uh, our, our Facebook pages, my husband and I, and just um, sending your prayers and condolences at the death of his grandmother. Good morning, Tawana. And so I just want to thank you because you didn't have to do that. You could have just scrolled on past and kept going. So we are thankful that anybody took time to just um, send greetings to us and let us know that they were in fact praying uh, with us. Good morning, Janice. And so I just am grateful for prayer. And I, before I even, good morning, Queen, even before I start to pray, I want to remind you, maybe you guys didn't hear this before. So I'm going to say it again because I want you to hear it from my mouth. Um, I shared <clears throat> I shared on one of my lives a couple of weeks ago about how I was praying for my husband's grandmother. And during that time of prayer, I asked God, you know, my biggest concern for her was, the fact that I was concerned about my mother-in-law. How would she take the death of her mother? And in that time of prayer, God, I was praying with somebody else and it's like God immediately moved me into a vision and I was in the room with my husband's grandmother and he showed me angels on both sides of the bed, excuse me, and there was one at the foot of her bed. And he told me not to be concerned, not to be afraid because he was with her. And then one of the angels I saw leaped over and whispered. And I asked God, what was he doing? What was that angel doing? And he said that he was speaking peace to her. Why am I telling you that again? Because this isn't the, this isn't the first death that um, has, has been experienced because of COVID-19. And unfortunately, it may not, may not be the last. But I just want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, that those that die in Christ, he does not leave them alone. And I know many of the concern is I can't get to the hospital. I can't go touch them. They can't hear my voice. But don't you know they hear his voice? He is speaking peace over them. He is talking to them. He is consistently encouraging them, encouraging them. Because guess what? We don't lose anybody when they die in Christ. He takes them, he receives them, and they go to be with him and they receive the reward that really all of us someday want to receive. But for yes, for us that are left behind, it gets a little hard. And so we're going to continue to pray for one another. We're going to pray for each other's strength. That's what the body is supposed to do. That's what we're here to do. We're here to pray for one another. We're here to encourage one another. And good morning, everybody that's joining. So I just want to be, even before I started to pray, I just wanted to remind everybody of that, that those that die in Christ, remember, they are not alone. And the other thing he showed me in the vision when I when I saw my husband's grandmother was 
he showed me this cloud around her. And I asked him, what was that cloud? And he said, that cloud, thank you, Jesus. He said that cloud was like I was visually seeing the the, the perfect love that was engulfing her. And what the scripture tell us, perfect love cast out all fear. So there was no fear in her. Yes, we were looking at her in the natural, but God said he was with her and there was peace. And I remember even when she passed and we got the information, they said she was at peace. And it wasn't just a, a, a word or a cliche. I really received that because that's what God told me, that he was with her and he was whispering peace into her ear, that he was, com- the angel was reminding in her peace. And when we had an opportunity um, to see her, we did a Zoom and we were able to all speak to her. She didn't respond back because she was unconscious. But even in that, when I saw the room, that was the same room the Lord had showed me. Uh, And I said, Lord, thank you because you are so faithful. So yes, my family, my husband's family, they're grieving the loss of grandmommy because she was 98 years old and, you know, she was a character. Um, And so, yes, they're grieving that she won't be here anymore in the natural, but we are confident about where she is going. And I even venture to say this for you that maybe have unsaved loved ones that are, are suffering through this. I still believe our God is such a good God that even in their on their deathbed, even in that condition, we don't know that God is not speaking to them and that he's not making Uh, that somebody's not making a decision for him even there. You know, some people joke about deathbed um, conversions. That's all it needs. The, 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 the thief on the cross, he did it right there. And, and Jesus promised him something. So, you know what? We just going to pray, Lord God, no matter if they have a lifetime to walk this thing out or if they receive you and then in an instant I change. We just want them changed. We just want them to be able to receive what God has for them. So I just wanted to encourage somebody today to know that don't let what we see by this virus and sickness, anything, don't let it make you think God is not capable. Capable. Don't let it make you think God does not hear you. Do not let it make you think that that the things around us are doing or getting the upper hand. God still is the one in control. He still is the one that has all things, all things, not some, but all things in his hand. And he has our loved ones securely in his hand. And so today I am at peace. I feel such a peace about even what is going on um, with our family. Why? Because I know that God is taking care of her, that he received her. So guess what? She really ain't got no more pain. It don't worry about matter what her kidney doing, legs doing, arm doing, memory doing. None of that matters because she's made completely whole. Thank you, Jesus, in his presence. And so that's where we're going to start for prayer because I just wanted my family to know, yes, We've had the the death of a loved one, but it ain't the death of our faith. It's not the death of our trust. We ain't stopped believing. We ain't stopped holding on. We have not stopped trusting that God got going to even make sense out of this. We didn't, it don't make no sense now because some of us being situations don't make no sense. If your situation might not make no sense right now, but I just believe you keep trusting in God and in, in a little while, in a little time, it's going to make better sense for you. It's, and, and then just say, Lord, help me so that I could continue to trust you in the process. That's right, Prophet Michelle. We have to enter into his rest. God will help us enter into his rest. So even though everything could be doing this around us, guess what happens in us? In us don't have to be in all in turmoil. Amen. So the first scripture I want to pray from this morning is Matthew 18 verses 19 and 20. And it says, again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, It will be done for them by my father in heaven for where two or three are gathered in my name. There am I among them. Father, I thank you today to know that even now as we gather, we may not be in the same location, but we have come to the same mindset. We have come with the same idea that you are father. We have come in agreement. Being in agreement doesn't mean that you think exactly like me. 
being in agreement, what agreement is we doing, we, we agreeing on something. We're agreeing in something. So here we are in earth agreeing together that God is an answerer of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. And so as your children today, Father, we come and say we come in agreement that you still answer prayers. We come in agreement that you are still sovereign and you are Lord. We come in agreement and say we trust you no matter what things look like, no matter what things feel like. We come in agreement and stand and say, you are Lord of Lord and King of King. You are the sovereign one. You are the one that makes the decision. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You're the beginning and the end and everything in between. We come in agreement as your children and say, Father, have your way in us. And then it's from this place. It is from this place that we then begin to ask. We don't ask for anything until we have first come in agreement. And we have come in agreement. And even before we ask father it also says if we got an all or if there's anything going on we need to put that down go deal with our issue and then come back so father even as your children father we ask you to search our heart make sure there's no wicked way in us because we want to walk in the way everlasting we desire to be who you call for us to be so father we thank you right now we're asking you to help us to think about it is there anything inside of us that we need to check right now that father if it is help us to forgive the poor people that we need to forgive help us lord god to let go of doubt right now, Lord, we ask you to remove fear, remove doubt, remove any hindrance that the enemy has placed in us and in front of us that keep us from coming in agreement because we also not come into agreement with with one another, but we got to come into agreement with heaven. I can't expect, you can't expect from heaven when you won't even agree with heaven. So Father, we come right now and ask you to move out anything that's a hindrance, anything that prohibits us from being able to step in and step into the realm of receiving what you have for us. And so Father, as we come into this agreement, as we seek your face, as we not only come in agreement as the body, but we come in agreement with your spirit. You say then we can ask and it will be done. Father, the first thing we're asking for you from you is not even a list of what we want. First thing we're asking, Lord, is for you to speak to us. Speak to us clearly, Lord God. We're asking you to give us the strategies and the blueprints and the plans of what you want for us to do in this earth. Father, we're asking you to speak to us individually. Lord God, talk to us about our our giftedness. Talk to us about the plans that you have for our life. Talk to us about the strategies to build healthy families, healthy relationships. Help us, Lord God, to be able to move in the things that you have called for us to do. Father, because it is our first desire before we ask for something that we're able to receive it. Because see, I can ask you to give me a job, but if I'm not qualified for it, if I don't have the skills, I can't do it. So I got to also ask you, if I ask for a job, then I have to ask you first, Lord, prepare me to go into that job. Prepare me to be able to do the job. So it's no different, Lord God, even as your children. We saying, Lord, you, we are your children and bless us. But Lord, prepare us to receive blessings. Oh, that's good right there. Lord, prepare us to be able to receive the things that we're asking for. Father, if there be selfishness in us, because see, sometimes we're asking, give me, give me, give me, like greedy kids. And when we get it, we won't share. But today, Father, we ask you to move out anything that stands in the way of us being who you've called for us to be. So move out selfishness, mean move out pride, move out greed, help us to be humble. Because Father, yes, you want us to use our gifts, but they are not to build us up, but to build up the kingdom. We have been called to be kingdom builders, not building the kingdom of me, myself, and I. Because the kingdom of me, myself, and I is an idolatrous kingdom because it's all about what I want. I am the triune God in my own eyesight. And God, that is not pleasing to you. So we come against that own, that false God of me, myself, and I, and we lay it on the altar today and say, Father, let the true triune God raise up in us. Let the Father, let the Father, let the Father, let the Father who sent his Son, let the Son, let the Son who died for me, let the Holy Spirit who instructs me, let all of that rise, let all of them rise on the inside of me so that I can walk the way, so we can walk the way that you have called for us to walk. 
And Father, you, you said in the scripture, 18, Matthew 18, 19, 20, says, so when we ask, you will do it. So Father, we are coming and saying, Lord God, we thank you. We need to do what you've called for us to do. Father, even in this season, I go back to the scripture in Jeremiah where you told me to read it. And it said that even though they were in 70 years of captivity, you told the prophet to tell the people, still keep building, still keep doing and, and planting in your family. You said, because they will not diminish. So Father, that is part of the will that I believe you have for us. So we're going to pray into that right now. Father, it is your will that even in this pandemic that we do not diminish, that we do not die away, that we do not um, step away, that we do not uh, step back from what you are trying to advance. So in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that you would help us to step forward, move forward, to be able to do the things that you have called for us to do. Father, we will not diminish. I declare, Lord God, that even in the midst of what seems like a horrible time, they're going to be advancements. They're going to be um, elevation. They're going to be people promoted. Yesterday, even in the paparazzi business, in one week, I went from being a consultant to a director. Why? Because God did it. Jewel ain't that smart. God did it. And I just hear by way of the Holy Spirit. He said, have some expectation in some unexpected advancement. God said, I am going to advance my children. Continue to trust me. See, we just got to do the work. I had to do the work and I had to be in position. I hear the Holy Spirit said, as my people be in position so that you can receive the blessing that I, you want for me. God said, that I, hey, oh, Rabasa. And I hear the Lord said, now, the Lord said, now tell my people what is the position. The position is this. There are several places we need to be in to be in position, not to diminish. Because in that scripture, he said, continue to invest in your family. Being in position means continue to pray over your children. Continue to work, work with your spouse. Continue to pray for them. Continue to invest in them. Continue to do what God has said do. Why? Because of what he wants to do next in your life. See, the enemy in this season wants to come and tear down. But God said, no, no, no. Trust me. There will not be a diminish. I will advance you. So being in positions me, what are you doing? Investing in your family. So I'm going to pray into that. Lord, help us right now to invest into our family. Even if it's just fun time, Lord, playing some Uno, playing some games, help us to invest in our families because Lord, we need to get together, get through this all together. Father, and I thank you right now. I even hear the Lord say, check on. You can't go visit somebody, but FaceTime if you need to. But I hear the Lord say, don't let anybody in your immediate family be unchecked. You are the avenue. You are the light. Call them, text them, prophesy over them, encourage them. You know what? Thank you, Jesus. He said, this is you gonna, This is going to be the best time for you. You got family members that ain't never went to church, but they can't go nowhere else. Call them. They would be happy to get a call from you. Call them and say, I just want to pray for you because I I know you in the house by yourself. Watch the Lord open up an opportunity for you to pray for them, prophesy over them. You don't know who you might lead to Christ, even in this crisis. I hear this is a Christ leading crisis. Even in this crisis, you're going to lead somebody to Christ. So Father, we just thank you right now for that. How you opening up those opportunities. He says also to be in position means I have to be in a place of prayer. This is not this is not the time to take down off of your stance as an intercessor. This is not the time to get weary. This is not the time to give up. This is the time to look up, press up, and move up. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. This is the time for us to look up. What are we looking up to? We looking up to the Lord. We looking up to him. We saying, Lord God, we need you. We acknowledge without you. We have no strength, no power. I can't do a doggone thing without you. So, Father, we just say thank you as we look Look up to you and acknowledge our need. But also as we look up, Father, that means I can't be no longer looking at a groundwork thing. God says it's time to stop looking at what you just see. But when you look up, you have a capacity and an ability to see greater and farther than you ever seen before. And he said in that place, when you have come and positioned yourself, he said, then he will, you will hear from him. Then you will receive from him because many of us miss because we get out of position and position means it's not just place, but it stands. 
Are we in the right stance, Lord God? And I pray right now, you help your people to stay in the right stance. That means stay in a, in a stance of trusting you. It, it, I promise you, it can be crazy all around you because it's been crazy all around me these last couple of months. I've had phone call after phone call, the family member after family member, loved one after loved one dealing with this COVID-19. And, and at, at times it became burdensome. It became heavy. But every time it became heavy, my daddy said, give it to me, Jewel. Mm. He said, give it to me. Mm. Ooh. And when I gave it to him, he restored my peace. He restored my confidence. He built and he was building me. This is the season. God said he's building many of you. That's right. He's expanding your capacity. Mm. He's expanding what we can do. He's expanding what we can stand under. He's building our spiritual muscles in this season. He says, I know, you know, God is not some mean God. He didn't create this and do this, but he takes advantage and he he uses every situation for his glory. God is going to get the glory in our lives, even in this situation. You might not believe it, but I trust it. I trust it. I trust it. I trust it. So father, continue to build us. You building us strong in the name of Jesus. And it's like, I'm visual. So it's like, I, I remember as a kid watching the, the bionic woman and the $6 million man. And you know how they used to do that run and do, do, do in slow motion. But they were actually, they were sort of slowing it down so we could see it. But the truth was they was running faster than we could see. I hear by way of the Holy Spirit. He said, in this season, I'm teaching many of you how to run so fast that... The enemy can't catch up with you. People won't see how swiftly you're moving from one place to the other. It's going to be a swift transition. You'll go quickly from one place to the other. One, I can't remember who it was, but I think it was the bionic woman. One of them had the super hearing that, that, that they could hear conversations in other places. God said, by way of the Holy Spirit, I'm building up your spiritual ear to hear even deeper than you've heard before. I'm building your ear to the place where you can hear me deeper. The, the, I'm cutting out the uh, the interference. I'm cutting out the distractions. I'm bringing you to the place that when you hear me, you know that it's me and there will be no doubt. I hear the Lord said, I'm taking you not only to the place where you can hear better. He said, but there'll be even greater accuracy in what you hear. I hear the Lord said that even in this, he's taking you to the place, you know, like they could run and they would jump and leap. God said, I am teaching you how to leap, leap in the spirit, leap by way of the spirit. You'll leap higher. See, you know, people coming and thinking they're going to attack you here, but you ain't going to leap over it in the spirit. God said, I'm teaching you how to leap over the attacks. I'm teaching you how to leap over the things that come against you. I'm teaching you how to leap over whatever would try to tear you down and hold you down. I'm teaching you how to leap in this season. Leap for joy. I remember say, leap in peace. Leap, leap, leap. I hear the Lord say, you're going to leap in this time and in this season. We say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hebrews 4.16 said, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let me read that one more time. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace in this in time grace to help in time of need. I thank you, Lord God, because even as you were talking about that whole leap thing, God says part of what happens is because he's building you in a new way. He said, then you're going to have a greater confidence. God is saying, I'm building confidence in my children in this season. The enemy in past seasons has beat us up, beat us up, beat us up. Many of us has doubted who we are. Many of us have, have doubted our uniqueness. I hear the Lord say, by way of who you are, walk fully in Prophet Michelle, I hear the Lord say, your uniqueness is beautiful to him. Thank you, Jesus. He said, your uniqueness is so beautiful to him. He said, even what somebody might look at and, and have issue with, he said, I have no issue with it. He said, because you are my daughter and you are doing that, which I have called for you to do. I hear the Holy Spirit say, it, it is actually different than what people think. A lot of times it is what your uniqueness is what draws. God said, Prophet Michelle, your uniqueness in this upcoming season is going to draw many to you. And it's going to draw those that people have discounted. It's going to draw those people who have, have 
Others have said they're not smart enough, not good enough, but yet they have a love for God and they just need somebody that's willing to see the good in them, willing to see the jewel in them, if you will, willing to see that they're just a diamond in the rough and they need somebody willing to say, I see you and I'm willing to invest in you. I hear the Lord say, uh, Prophetess Michelle, be ready because he's going to send you some diamonds in the rough and he's going to give you the right kind of tools to polish them up. Thank you, Jesus. He said he's going to show you how to polish them because they need somebody to help them realize that they got some good on the inside of them. And so God said in this season, he's building a confidence in his people. There's a new confidence. God, thank you for the confidence you're building in Connie right now. Lord God, I thank you for the confidence you're building in her. I hear the Lord say, Connie, you have been a prayer warrior on the wall for many years. This isn't a new thing to you. You're not a new one to intercession. But I also hear the Lord said that in some seasons past, sometimes we just get beat up so much that We can get weary, but I hear the Lord say for you, Connie, Connie Good, that what he's getting ready to do for you is rebuild. There's a rebuild. Oh, thank you, G. See, you know, that's why he brought me the the, the $6 million man and the the Biden woman, because remember, they kind of crashed and burned, but then they put them back together. And I hear the Lord say for you, Connie, that in seasons past, not that you crashed and burned in terms of not doing what he said, but the stuff that kept coming against you was trying to burn you up and and, and, uh, tire you out. But I hear God said, no, 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 not. So he said, I'm rebuilding you, Connie, in this season. And as I rebuild you in this season, your prayer life, who you are as an intercessor is getting ready to go to a higher level. And and the reason why he said, because there are more that need you. There are more that need to hear how to pray. There are more that need to understand prayer is not just a simple God, give me a man and walk away. There are many that need to know what it means to, 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 uh, to travail in prayer. There are many that need to know, Connie, what it means to be able to say, I'm trusting in him and I'm going to stay right there until I get an answer. And so, Father, I thank you for the building of Connie right now in the name of Jesus. Finally, let the it said, let us, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne. Father, I thank you for drawing us near to the throne. Father, I thank you for Darla tonight, today. Father, I thank you for building her. I thank you for the new confidence that you are releasing in her. I thank you, Father, not only for a new confidence in who she is, but a new confidence in the fact that you have a calling on her life. A new confidence, Lord God, that she can accomplish everything that you said she can. And many times the enemy of our soul wants to make us think that our limitations limit you. Let me say that again. Your limitations don't limit God. God can do in spite of what you think is limited. In fact, that's what's so beautiful about our relationship with God. We bring our little selves and our big God uses our little self. And so I thank you, Lord, for what you're rebuilding in Darla and how you're building that confidence in her. Lord God, we thank you for because it says that we can find not only confidence as we draw near to your grace, but that we may receive mercy and grace to help us. Father, I thank you for that grace that helps us. I thank you right now for the grace for Keisha Nicole right now. Now, she wrote rebuild real big and I that just leaped out of me in the comments and I thank you Lord God that you are rebuilding her right now in the name of Jesus you are rebuilding her stronger than she's ever been before father I thank you right now that your mercy your mercy the Lord is like mercy if, if, if I could give mercy a look it's like I see coins these coins uh 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 falling down on you Keisha it's almost like it's falling down on you and the mercy of God is just overtaking you and in this sense I guess he's showing it to me like coins is because he's saying he gonna build the thing for you that needs to be built it's something in your desire and heart um that you want uh Keisha Nicole that uh, that you want built. And he says he is going to build it for you. So that's why I see the coins because he is letting you know that it is not by your power. It's not by your strength. I don't know if it's your business or something, but it's something in your heart that he, you've been, you've been kind of contemplating and your, 
I see you kind of trying to figure out where is this going to come from. He said, not in, not from you. It's coming through me. It's coming through me. So right now, I just speak confidence in you, Keisha, Nicole, that you begin to walk fully in everything that God has already promised you. He, in fact, said the vision and the desire that's in your heart didn't start with you in the first place. It came from me. And because it came from him, he said, I am going to walk it out, work it out, and I'm going to blow your mind and how this thing is going to be manifested in you and through you. And I hear the Lord say, he's doing it for a reason. Sometimes, you know, we look at ministry as only one way. I got to stand in a pulpit kind of way. But I hear the Lord say that for you, uh, Keisha Nicole, your ministry is marketplace as as well. I see a marketplace where God is doing some things for you. And um, there you go. Mental health. There you go. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, because I was just going to say the Lord is showing me it's your ministry that he's doing is it's marketplace, but it's going to be to help the people. So Father, we thank you. So we just pray right now for that mental health treatment facility that Keisha Nicole wants. Father, and, and you gave her the vision for it. And Father, I just declare everything, every building, every every worker, everything that you have said for her will come to be. Father, so we speak that Matthew Healing, a, a wellness and recovery center, we declare that Father, it is so that every Everything about it is going to uh, be established. And when it's established, Lord God, I thank you also in the midst of it. I thank you, Lord God, that what you're going to do in that is it's going to become kind of a a blueprint. I thank you. Uh, God said he's going to set that up. When you set that up, Keisha, it's going to become a blueprint. So others are going to come and ask you, how do I do this? So be, be prepared that once you get up and running, you will begin to see other centers that come out of you. So Father, I thank you. That's kind of an apostolic uh, planting that God is putting you. And so Keisha Nicole, watch that thing happen. And then my Keisha, my Keisha, the warrior woman, Keisha Purnell, in the name of Jesus, I just come right now and speak grace over you in the name of Jesus. I speak grace to you. I speak grace. I speak grace because the Lord said the confidence is when you draw near to the throne of grace. And as you draw closer to the throne of God, he says there's more confidence in all that he has for you being birthed out. All that he has for you is coming forth in the name of Jesus. So Father, I thank you for Keisha. I thank you, Lord God, for removing any stress. I thank you, Lord God, for just relieving the tension. Um, There are times, Lord, when things go well and then there's sometimes where she feels overwhelmed. But I thank you today, Lord God, that you're removing all of that in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise for that in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord God, that she is that warrior woman. And she is willing to fight the good fight for you. And I hear the Lord say, Keisha, know that every time you fight the fight, I have put you in to fight. Even though the enemy wants to tell you you lost because it doesn't look like what you think. He said you have never lost. You have never lost. You have never lost. Let me hear it again. He said you have never lost. Why have you never lost? Because you been faithful to what he has called to you to do. So Father, we just thank you right now. So we thank you for even strength and comfort that you are giving her right now in the name of Jesus. Psalms 141 and 2 says, let my prayer be counted as incense, incense before you and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus, because even as we are praying, you are counting it as a sweet fragrance unto you. We are thanking you right now, Lord, that we you are receiving our sacrifices of praise, of prayer, of thanksgiving. We are coming as a people trusting you right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I just speak blessings over your people. I count it an honor and a privilege to pray. Father, because you already have told us as your children that you hear us, even before we start praying, even before we start asking, you already are listening. So today, I thank you for the honor and the privilege that we have to come through these open doors. These doors are open for us to pray. And I thank you right now that we walk walk through them with an expectation of hearing from you, from receiving from you. Father, I bring Monique Lawson to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I give you praise for her life. Father, I give you praise for her life. I thank you for all of the things right now you are setting in motion and setting in in, in, a, in a row. And I see uh, Monique like, like the dominoes. They set up the dominoes, right? So 
You know how sometimes you could it, you think about the people that setting up those dominoes. It's a tedious job because they setting them up one by one by one, and they got to be careful not to knock them down. So they set them all up, and then at the end they push one domino and all of them fall. I hear the Lord say that is what He has been doing. It's it's some things that you've been praying for and waiting for, but it feels like they just not coming. God said because He's setting things in motion, and when you get to that last one thing that you set in place, Monique, He said. What will happen is he'll press it and then you'll see all the blessings come forth. He said they're going to come like a rushing wind. So I speak that blessing over you, Monique, that the things that you've been waiting for, the things that you've been building, he said has not been in vain. And at just the right time. He going to hit it and it's going to be a flow for you. And it's going to be a smooth flow. If you've ever seen when they, they push those dominoes, how they go and then they make this pretty pattern. God said it's going to be a beautiful pattern for, to, that's going to unfold before you that you're going to see by way of the spirit as he unfolds the things that you are waiting for from him. We give you praise. So, Father, I just pray into that. I thank you, Lord God. Let her be encouraged. Let encouragement be her portion today because I just feel like there was a a little bit of weariness going on, but today I speak to that weariness and I curse it at the root and I declare by way of the Holy Spirit, Monica, refreshing right now, hitting you a new wind, a fresh wind, an encouraging wind that God is doing even greater things in you than you've ever realized before. And so we just say thank you, Lord, for what you're doing right now. Father, I bring Tamika Alexander to you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the life of Tamika. Father, I thank you for the life of Tamika. I say that again. I thank you for the life of Tamika. I come and I speak over you right now, a confidence in the name of Jesus, Tamika. I speak right now because oftentimes, you know, the enemy will play with us and He will mess with us and try to make us think that we're not good enough or that something is wrong with us. But I come today to tell you and remind you that God is a good God. I come to remind you, Tamika, you already know this, but I just come to remind you that God has a great plan for you. I come and speak over you. I speak to your destiny. You have a destiny in the Lord. I come and speak. Not only do you have a destiny, but God said he's got mission for you. He's got plan for you. And so don't let fear, intimidation, or the enemy lie to you and make you think you've done too much. Because sometimes, this is just the truth about all of us, sometimes we make decisions in ourselves. We say, God help us. We say those things, but we make decisions and we later find out, oops, maybe I made the decision. But guess what? God says, I love you too much, Tamika. I'm not going to let you stay in a place where you don't feel qualified to receive my love. He said, because I'm not giving you my love because you're qualified. I'm giving you my love because you're my daughter. So I speak over your sonship. I speak over who you are as a daughter of destiny. God is getting ready in this new season to fire you up because you have dreams, you have visions, you even see things very prophetically. But a lot of times you just hold that in and you don't say nothing. But God said, I'm getting ready to do something. I speak fire right now. I speak fire over you in the name of Jesus. He's firing up the gifts on the inside of you, Tamika. He's firing them up like never before. You're going to begin to even watch yourself when you dream, when you have visions. There's going to be a greater clarity that's going to come because there are many that actually Actually trust who you are as a friend and you don't even see that but they trust who you are as a friend they trust what you say to them they trust who you are and so I just speak that over you right now a, a refining of your identity in this season an encouragement of your spirit an encouragement of who you are as a daughter and so father I just give you praise right now I thank you for the fire and thank you for the fire. I thank you for the fire that's refining, that refining fire. Father, I speak that over all of your children today, Lord God. We need a refining fire. Refine our identity. Refine who we are. Why? So that we can walk fully in who you have called us to be. Lord, I thank you that in this season, this time that we are in, we are not backing up. We are not backing down. And we giving you praise right now in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. I think I saw somebody. Um, I'm trying to go back through the comments because I don't want to miss no specific prayer request. But I think somebody mentioned that their father had passed. 
Um, And so I just pray for that family in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for those that have have loved ones that have died. Uh, Father, we thank you because you are a comforter. You are the one that will comfort our hearts. You are the one that will hold us up. We give you praise right now. Father, we thank you for your love for us. And Father, we may not understand all that is going on, but we're going to trust you through the process. And so, Father, we thank you right now for what you are doing. Lord, we give you praise. I thank you, Lord, that you not only for this person who pulled whoever that was to put the comment on, but for Father, anybody that has had death in the family and not just because of COVID, but for whatever. Father, we're asking right now that you would hold us, that you would keep us, that you would help us, Lord, as we walk through this time, because we're in an unusual time. We can't have funerals the way that we normally do. And so, Father, I just give you praise right now that you're going to help us to be able to walk through and do and to take care and to be able to honor our loved ones the way that you desire for us. Father, I bring to you Jacqueline. I, I don't know if I'm, I, your last name is A-L-M-A-Z-O. Um, Father, I thank you right now for Jacqueline. Lord God, I thank you for the the, the new uh, things that you're doing in her life. I thank you right now for uh, answers to prayers. I thank you right now, Lord, for, for direction. I thank you, Father, for you giving strength in this season. I, I hear the Lord say that I have the strength that you need, Jacqueline. I can sustain you and I can hold you. I hear the Lord saying that there's just like a sweetness to you. There's just a, a sweetness to your personality. But I hear the Lord saying right now, that, that he wants you to be reminded that he has you and he will continue to hold you up and continue to keep you. Uh, and so I just pray for that right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for Jacqueline and her entire household. Father, I thank you that you are, are, are fixing some things in her favor. I thank you, Lord God, that you are turning some things uh, to, to, to her advantage. So Father, we thank you right now for all that you're doing. Father, we're praying for Zendo uh, for her son to, to receive a job. And there are others that need work in this time. And so, Father, we're thanking you for open those doors that that you may uh, they may walk in and be able to find jobs and to be in a place of safety, even in these jobs. And so, Father, we're thanking you right now that you're going to open those doors for him in the name of Jesus. Father, I'm asking for healing right now in the body um, uh, for Janice. Lord, she's having some shortness of breath and some breath and burning in her stomach. Father, we ask right now that your healing virtues would touch her. And as we come together as a body, Father, we just release healing over her right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Let there be healing by the fire of God, by the virtue, the healing virtue of God. Lord God, we thank you right now for even returning her breath, Lord God. Remove the stress, remove the tension because some of that stress and tension. So we speak to that stress and tension first and tell you to let go. It's almost like it's locking you. I speak you to let go, unlock her right now in the name of Jesus. Whoo, hi, yet it my side. And when you unlock, Lord God, let the breath come. Let the uh, let the breathing be normal. We speak, Lord God, no um uh, no more of the burning of the stomach. No more right now in the name of Jesus. Complete healing. Be healed in Jesus' name. And Father, we speak healing over anybody else that stand in the need of healing. We're asking you, Lord God to touch our bodies because Father, your promise is we are healed and that's a past tense. So Father, we come and ask you to help us to position ourselves so we can receive the healing from you. Father, we thank you for healing high blood pressure. Lord God, you're bringing somebody off of the medicine. Lord, bringing somebody off of di- that with diabetes, you're regulating their blood. We thank you, Father. We speak to the cancer cells and we curse them in the name of Jesus. We declare healing in the body, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that everything that we need is in you. And we come and say, thank you for healing our bodies. And I just hear the Lord saying, even for anybody on here that's been sick, take communion. 
Take communion. I, I, I just feel like the Lord said, take communion. Not that it's anything in the communion, but it's the act of saying, Lord, I'm coming into agreement with you. It doesn't matter if you don't got all of the elements. Use what you got and offer it up to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm coming and I'm receiving this, this communion um, before me. And Father, I speak healing over my body right now in the name of Jesus. I release the healing that I need for my body. Lord God, I pray you release healing over everybody that stands on or that stands in need of healing. Father, it's not that we are the healer. We are calling on the one that is. You are the healer and we thank you right now. Father, yes, touch our Netta's body, Lord. Let, let her receive the healing that you have for her. We give you praise for that right now in the name of Jesus. I go back to Jacqueline. I'm not sure of a name. I don't want to misspell it. A-L-M. I think it is. I also heard the Lord say for you, Jacqueline, if you're still on the live, I heard the Lord say that there's somebody you've been really praying for. It's a young man. I'm not sure if it's a son, a brother. I don't know. What, but there's a young man that you've been praying for. And I hear the Lord say, he hears your prayers. He said, and, and, and he wipes away the tears. So there's been some grieving. There's been some, there's been some, um, um, just some heaviness with that. And the Lord is saying that he hears your prayers and he wipes away the tears. So God is going to take care of whatever that situation is for you. And so, Father, I just thank you that you care enough about us. Don't you love the fact that God cares enough about us that he would not only speak to us, he speaks to strangers about us. He He had people praying for us that may not we may not even know, but he cares so much about us that he will send a word to us. He will send a care the big cares for us so father we just thank you today that you love us this much that you care about us this much that you continue to seek us father thank you for seeking after us even when sometimes we don't always seek after you the way we ought to but i pray right now you release a new seek in the hearts of your children that we come to a place that we seek you even more we desire you even more we we run after you even more we don't we don't back down but we press into your presence so that we can receive what you have for us. Father, I thank you for Quinn today. I thank you, Lord God, for all the things that you are doing in her life. I thank you, Father, for uh, advancement in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the upliftment in the name of Jesus. I thank you for blessing her household. I thank you for blessing her finances. I thank you for blessing her body. Everything related to Quinn, I speak blessings over it in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for Sapphire. Father, same thing for Sapphire. I speak blessings over her. I speak blessings for her household, over her body, over her mind, over her strength. Lord God, let not the enemy snatch anything away from her, but that she able to expand and grow in all that you have for her. Father, I bring Bethany to you. Father, I thank you. You know, God, like I said, God talks to me in a strange way. I, Bethany, your last name is Banks. And it, 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 as soon as I said Bethany, I heard you go into the bank. Thank you, Lord. The, the Lord is getting ready to release some funds to you, Bethany. So, Father, I thank you for Bethany's going to the bank. Whatever it is that you're getting ready to bless into her and pour into her, I thank you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. I speak there are no more delays in the money that it, whatever it is for her, that the Spirit opens it up, that there's no delay and that she's able to receive everything in a timely fashion. And I thank you, Lord God, that there will be no interruptions, that everything will connect. I, I speak for divine connections, that one uh, one road leads to the next road and every connection is intact, that there's no bre break, uh, breaches in the connection. So, Father, I thank you for what you're doing right now for Bethany and her family. Father, I thank you for Tasha right now in the name of Jesus. I speak blessings over her household. I speak fulfillment of your destiny over her. I thank you, Father, for everything that you have promised her is yes and amen. God is not one that he should lie. If he say a thing, he ain't going to take it back. So I thank you, Lord God, that she's not going to look at what's around her, but she's going to trust in what you said. And so, Father, we give you praise right now in the name of Jesus for all of that. Father, I pray for... 
Monika, uh, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, M-O-N-E-E-K-A. Father, I thank you for the life of your daughter in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now for open doors, Lord God, and I thank you for cutoff seasons. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I hear the Lord said there was some cutoff season. There were some things in your life that he cut off and you know he cut them off and you thank him for cutting them off. But then sometimes, you know, the enemy wanted to make you think, well, no, you just did that. No, God said, I cut some things off in your life because it was the cutoff season. It was the time for that to end. And he said, but now you're in position in front of the new doors that he is opening up for you. And I thank you, Lord God, for all of the doors that you have opened for her. I thank you, Father, that she's walking through them fully, completely. And I see you fully packed. Thank you, Jesus. And what I mean by fully packed is like you got on a backpack, you got new luggage, you got all this and it's pretty luggage. This look like, like Louis Vuitton, you know, some, some expensive of luggage. So it's almost like you're going through this new door, but you're going through with new luggage. So he had to cut you off. Oh, thank you. He said what he cut off was the old baggage. He wasn't letting you bring in no new baggage. I mean, no old baggage into your new season. And so I just declare for you in the name of Jesus that God is saying you are walking into your new season, those new doors, and he is walking you in fully packed. He's walking you in fully packed. And I see in these luggage, some of the luggage is really spiritual in sense. It's your gifting. God said in this new season, the gifting that's on the inside of you is being elevated to a next level. And he said, and then some of it is natural. So some of the things you need for you to take care of yourself and your and your household, he said, that's going to be elevated. So you are coming through fully packed. He said, there will be no lack for you in this season. So father, I just thank you for that. And I speak into that and I de uh, declare that it will prosper as you have declared it to the prosper in Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I come right now and I'm praying for Ty, Lord, that who lost her son in, in a in a hit in a, a, a hit and run a accident. I'm, I'm assuming is what happened, Father. So we're asking right now that you would begin to mend this heart. That's a broken heart, Lord God. We come against that spirit of brokenness in the name of Jesus, Father. Help her, Lord, to be able to receive your comfort, receive your blessing right now in the name of Jesus, Father. May your spirit just be like a warm blanket, like the arms of a daddy holding her and comforting her. So Father, we just ask right now that you would remove any, any residue of things of guilt. If there be any guilt, Lord God, remove guilt. Father, If because I feel like some of that is, is it's almost like she's blaming herself. So Father, remove that guilt from her right now in the name of Jesus. So I pray for Ty right now. I pray, Lord God, that you break any bondage that, that is holding her in this place where she's not able to move forward. But we say thank you right now. We say thank you right now. We say thank you for the healing of her heart. Lord God, the healing of her soul. Father, help her to be able to trust you. I, Lord God, I pray that your spirit would just be up. Uh, able to renew her right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we just give you praise. Father, and I just pray, let, let her be visited by your spirit in this season. Let her be, hear from you, Lord God, and remove all of the doubt that you love her. Father, because sometimes when we go through these real hard places, we start to feel like maybe I'm unloved. Maybe God don't love me. Maybe I've done something. So we speak to all the blame and we curse curse it right now at the root. And we just declare Ty is loved by God and she's going to walk in it and feel and receive all that she needs. Father, we just say thank you. We love you. We honor you. We adore you. We give you the praise, Father. And so I just seal all these prayers. And Psalms, again, Psalms 141 says, let my prayer be counted as incense before you and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. So father, in the name of Jesus, I'm just thanking you. I'm thanking you, Lord God, that you received my prayers. And Brenna, even though you came late, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to pray over your life and then you can go back and watch the whole thing at, at, at the 
when we uh, when I finish and do the replay. But Brenna, right now, I just come and speak destiny over you. I come and speak encouragement over you. I just come right now in the name of Jesus and declare everything that God has told you, it will come to pass. No more doubting if you heard right. No more uh, double uh, guessing and, and, and you know, because you're a logical mind sometimes rolls like this and it gets on a roll. But I come today to just tell you, Brenna, that God said, yes, you heard what he said. And yes, it was him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So I just speak over a peace over you, Brenna, right now in the name of Jesus, that you are able to know that you know that what God is speaking to you, you can walk in the fullness of it. And there be no doubt, there be no lack, and that you know God has done what he can say he can do. Yes, God. Yes, God. I bring Tawana to you right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for everything you're doing in her life. I thank you for provision. I thank you for promises. I pray right now, even today, for just an increase in your encouragement in her. Because many times I see you, Tawana, you carry the burden of a lot of people. And I I know by that, by, by way of experiencing myself, when you're carrying the burdens of prayer and praying for everybody, sometimes you just get physically exhausted and tired. But I just speak a refreshing to you right now in the name of Jesus, that, that the Lord gives you a renewing of your energy right now. So Tawana, I just speak that over you. And Lord God, I thank you for all that you're doing in her life. I thank you that every plan is in place. Everything is coming out the way God has called for it to do. And it will be the way he said he was. And I just hear that Lord say that's for many of you on here right now. And even for some that'll come and listen to the replay. God wants you to know he has not changed his mind about what he has declared to you. If God told you a thing, he's not a man that he should lie. He said, stand in expectation because he is going to bring it to be. It will happen. And it may not happen in the way that you think and how you think. He said, but I've not changed my mind about you. So I will bring it to pass. So Father, I thank you. I just declare every destiny over on every person on this live and even the replay, every destiny that you have declared for your people will come to pass. We will align ourselves to your way. We will come in agreement with what you were said. We will come. That's what our first scripture said. If two agree on earth, but Father, we not only agree with each other, but we come in agreement with the Holy Spirit. Father, give us ears to hear. Move out any any clogging of our spiritual ear. Let us hear what you are saying to us. Father, move out doubt. This is going to be a time and a season where we're going to walk in greater uh, confidence. That's what the next Hebrew 460 said. Let us then with confidence draw near. We're going to draw near in confidence. I thank you, Father, for releasing confidence. There's a boldness. Let the Lion of Judah roar through us. Let us be bold in all that you've called for us to do. We're going to speak with boldness. We're going to walk in boldness. We're going to pray with boldness. We're not going to pray these wimpy prayers hoping that maybe you might hear us. We're going to come with a boldness, with an assurance that says, Lord, you are my father. You've already told me your word is full of the promises of God. I'm going to pray your promises. I'm going to come with the confidence and knowing that as I enter, as I come near to the throne of grace, grace will meet me. Grace and mercy will be mine and I will find the help that I need in the time of need. You're not going to leave us out alone and untaken care of. You you are not that kind of God. You say you never leave us nor forsake us. So we know with confidence that you are with us. And I give you praise today. I'm getting happy right in here. Father, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Give you praise. Why? Because you are worthy of it. You're a good God. You're a loving God. And I thank you for strength. I thank you for encouragement. You breaking depression off of somebody right now. I feel it in the name of Jesus. Somebody's been heavy. Somebody's been heavy. I break that thing off of you right now in the name of Jesus. I speak to you joy. I speak peace over you. I break it. Echo Rabasa in the name of Jesus. The, the Lord Jesus himself rebuke that spirit of depression off of you. I can't. He breaks it off of you right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, doubt. Doubt gotta go. It has no place in the children of God. We break doubt off of you right now with the name of Jesus. There's even just this kind of 
uh, I don't even know the word for it, but just almost like lack of energy, the fatigue. Thank you, Jesus. I break fatigue off of you right now in the name of Jesus, because many of you, the enemy has been warring with you. But God said, I am the one that wins the battle. Come on, somebody. So in the name of Jesus, I just declare over you, a refreshing in the spirit. I declare over you right now, a refreshing fresh wind coming hit you fresh wind is hitting you energy that you didn't even know ah come on receive your energy receive your strength from god receive it right now by way of the spirit he is working he is working he is working come on somebody come on somebody he is working in your favor don't let the enemy lie to you no more god has already said you are free and those that are free are free indeed guess what this is the visual he gave me he then gave you a key I don't got no key next to me, but let me just pretend it's the key. I got the key, right? That means I can unlock what is locked. You have been unlocked. Why are you standing in a prison door that you got the key to unlock? Come on, somebody. Unlock that stuff in yourself. Lord God, I come by way of the spirit and declare your people are unlocked. We 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 are not standing in no prison doors no more. We unlocked. We unlocked. We unlocked. We have freedom. We have peace. We have joy. Restoration is ours. Revival is ours. I ain't talking about revival in some building. I'm talking internal revival. Revive us today. Give us new strength. Give us new energy. Give us new peace. Oh, bona fide minister Neil, I come today to say God says the fire about to hit you in a way that it has not hit you before. I see you. It's like I see you standing and all I see is fire coming off the top of your head. God said bona fide minister. He said, you about to be just that. He said, I'm getting ready to do a new thing in you. Oh, I see the fire of God hitting you in a new way. Your ministry, how you minister is getting ready to shift some and it's going to shift in a good way. God said, watch more signs and wonders come. Watch more signs and wonders follow you as you follow after him. I get it. So Father, I give you praise. I give you praise. Oh my God, unlock us, Jesus. You given us the key. Let us unlock the things that need to be unlocked. Help us walk in the fullness of the power. Help us to tap into the power that's on the inside of us. We're not asking for something out there. God said, my spirit dwells in you. If my spirit dwells in you, then the power is already in you. And I thank you for the power that's in us. Lord God, I thank you for Rebecca Heard today. I thank you, Lord God, for the unlocking that you've done and are continuing to do in her life. Father, I thank you as you shift some things in Rebecca's favor. Lord God, I come in agreement with what the things that she was praying. She was praying. Rebecca, I see you praying for something about two or three days ago and I'm coming to come in agreement with you on what you
Okay, am I back? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean. Let's see. Let's see. And it's still recording, so let's see if y'all can see me. I'm gonna just oh hey, hey, come on, somebody. All right. The devil is a liar. I mean, this thing just plumb shut off. Oh my god, my god, but I bet and I'm gonna finish what I was praying. So, Father, we just give you honor. We give you praise. I thank you for, Father, what you are doing. I'm trying to remember. I was praying for somebody. Um, But, Father, you know the prayer that you wanted me to pray. You know the words that you wanted me to say. And so, Father, I thank you right now that you are touching the lives of everybody. Um, Come on, Holy Ghost. What, What was you telling me? Jesus, 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 Jesus. Rebecca, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just continue to speak life over Rebecca. You had a word for her. And Father, I thank you that you are doing above and beyond what we could ask of thee. I thank you, Lord God, even by way of what just happened. I use that as a testimony of what you are doing for Rebecca. I use that as a testimony because the enemy oftentimes has tried to cut you from receiving the word from the Lord. But God says, Rebecca, even the even hell cannot stop what he is doing in you. Hell cannot push back the things that he's about to p- provide for you and the things that he's getting ready to bring to fruition in your life. And so I just come by way of the Holy Spirit and I pray into that and say, Lord, thank you that you are going to do above and beyond what she can ask and or think nothing. The enemy cannot stop. He cannot cut off even what you have promised for her. I believe you were showing me that it was something she'd been praying for. And so Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I come into agreement that that which you've been praying for, God says, I am going to bring it back. I am going to do it. I thank you, Lord God, because the enemy will not win is what God says. The enemy will not win. And he said, I am willing to move heaven so that you can be able to receive what he wants. Because See, my computer ain't never did this to me before. It decided it wanted to shut down to do an update. But I said, nah, uh I'm going to get back on. I'm surprised the thing didn't cut off. But God said, see, even when the enemy brings something for, for negative, he said, I have a way of making sure the connection ain't cut. Thank you, Jesus. Because I could still see y'all from my phone. I just couldn't get to you. But in the but I thank God right now for his reminder that there's sometimes that we may not see and we may think we disconnected from God. He said, but I see everything. Thank you, Jesus. I could see y'all talking. I could see everything. I just couldn't talk to you right there. So I come by way of the Holy Ghost to give you this reminder today that there's sometimes they're going to feel like there's a disconnect, but God wants you to know. I see everything. I've not moved to the side. I've not moved to the left, but I am in position so that you can receive the blessing that you need for me. So Father, I say thank you right now. Oh, my God, my God. I say thank you. Father, every one of these prayers that we have prayed are sealed by the Holy Spirit, by the blood of the Lamb. I declare that they not only going to happen, they are they, they are destined to happen because we are aligning ourselves so that they can happen. We are positioning ourselves so they can happen. Father, I thank you. I thank you. Even on the other side of some things that we've walked through, God said, I am doing a bigger and better thing for you. So, Father, we praise you. We say thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray this prayer and say amen. Now, I don't normally uh, I don't normally do a whole bunch of promoting, but I would love for you guys to get my new book, Broken China Makes a Beautiful Mosaic. And you can get that from um you can get that off of my, my website, which is publishedivision.com. And um, that is how you can bless me in my ministry, because I believe that it's a word in there for not only married women, but single women as well. It's called Broken China Makes a Beautiful Mosaic. And so if you would just be uh, so, so um, I would be I would be so honored that if you would bless me in that way. Um, So this is, you know. The end of today's prayer, but I believe the Lord said we're going to we're going to continue in this vein. So even in May, we're going to come back in May and we're going to I'm just going to keep the same thing. I'm going to pray whatever scriptures the Lord tell me to pray. Whoever comes on, I'm just going to pray for you because I feel like that's that's what I can do. You know, the enemy wants to think we 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 have no strength and no power, but that's a lot. We got a lot of strength. We got a lot of power because what do I say all the time anyway? My thing says we're going to pray until 
mountains are moved. So till next week, I, I speak blessings over each of you. I want to hear some testimonies. Y'all, y'all inbox me and say, hey, when you pray for such and such, God did this. I want to hear that because that's encouraging to me. And that lets me know I'm going to keep on praying till we see just that until God gets the glory. Uh, thank you, Sapphire. Uh, thank you, Arnetta, for getting the book. And you guys have to let me know what you think about it. Amen. God bless you. You guys have a great day.